Okay, there we go. There we go. We're here. How late? How late am I? What time is it? The computer's not even showing me the time. Oh, hang on. We got. I always forget to uh, skip. I got to skip an ad, and then I have to actually turn the volume down so I can't hear myself. There we go. Okay. Now I'm gonna slowly adjust the camera for your for maximum viewing pleasure. Nope, nope, we can see the tape. We don't want to see the tape. There we go. That's what we want right there. Now we're going to make a small adjustment right here, right? It's important to do this live while everybody's watching instead of just right before. There we go. There we go. Let's arrange some of this stuff. Make it look nice and neat, right? Kiefer, I got your dollock out here. I know he threatens me, so I had to put his dollock. Not really, but he was like, make sure and get that dollock out there. Okay, here we go. Here we go. What is up? What's up, Zell? What's up, Shaker? What's up, Mark Grant? Pocket Tank, Stasa 23, uh, Ironbound, Arrowheads 46, or Jeff? Hone Pie, Kellen, Boss 3251. What is going on? Oh my gosh. I am late to my own party. Uh, all right. You know what? I just realized <laughs> I made the adjustment, but I can still see the tape. See, like right here, I can still see that. So we're gonna we're actually gonna zoom in just a little bit more, to make sure that we get that all the way, almost all the way off, a little bit more. Get that all the way off the camera there. There it is, right there. Okay. Get all these moved in here. So it's actually, it's it's interesting. This is the first time I've done a live where I've actually paid attention to where that tape line is on my mat. What I need to do is just get a bigger mat so we don't see that at all. So I'm making a little adjustment to the camera here so that she's straight. Pet peeves about that. We'll get to going here in just a sec. Uh, that's straight enough. That's straight enough for me. Oh my gosh, here we go. Jimmy Slash, Jimmy Slash Live crashed? That stinks. I've never had that. <laughs> Ironbound, you're deep. Hmm. Well, I can't I can't officially say that my plan is to catch up, but I guess we'll just proceed with what I'm doing where I'm sitting right now. Ah. So tell us how's the A purpose. So the A Purvis was actually planned. It was the video that was planned for today, but I really wanted to unbox this guy. And I knew that uh, Shaker wouldn't mind because Shaker sent the A Purvis. Um, the A Purvis is basically perfect. Um, I, I love this knife. It's incredible. It is essentially flawless. Uh, anybody who, excuse me, managed to snag one, um, you're going to be very, very happy with it. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, I know. The Benchmade that Shaker gave me, I carried this and cut stuff with it today and just enjoyed the heck out of it. Um, that color setup, I never knew that I would like that. But the combination of the blue G10, and this is like, it's a really rich blue with and it's contoured. You know, that and, and uh, the pivot color contrasting with the um, uh, black uh, bolsters. Sorry, it's not perfectly focused on camera, but oh my gosh, this is just wonderful. Such an awesome gift. What's my next Microtech? So technically, so you guys, anybody who watched that video about past, present, and future, um, I just like, and it's because Jeff showed me a picture of one. And I can't I can't say exactly what, what it is because I don't want to ruin anything just in case Jeff decides to go a different route. But um, let me get that Jason Clark in here. Let me squeeze that bad boy in here. There we go, buddy. Um, but uh Jeff showed me a picture of a um, Marfion MSG, Marfion Strider uh, collaboration MSG 3.5. And I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot about this knife. I knew that it existed, but they have evolved it. They turned the MSG 3 from last year, or it was like two years ago, was a sandwich construction. So it's like the Hinder XM18 or any other titanium frame lock, right? Pillar construction. But 3.5s are integrals. 
and it is essentially a Strider. Uh, it's a flipper uh, um, SNG. That's a that's an integral, and it's running on bearings, but it's got like that Marfione custom look and feel to it. And I was shocked at the base price. Now those things get super high in price, crazy high in price. But at the base, like base level, if you just go apocalyptic or stonewash finish with apocalyptic or stonewash finish, they're like seven hundred and fifty dollars. Isn't that what we saw, Jeff? I mean, like I actually called and I told Jeff this. I called this retailer because I was like, dude, look how inexpensive this is. I say inexpensive. I mean for a full custom. And I, and Jeff was like, is it used? You know, what's the deal with it? And I was like, I, I was like, I don't know, you know, and I called and he was like, no, yeah, that's just that's the price. Seven hundred and fifty bucks for a full custom Marfion Strider MSG 3.5 made in the US in, in the USA. And it's an integral. Honestly, I mean, 750 bucks, in my opinion, is kind of a steal, but I don't know. What's up, MC and other knife nuts? Uh, yeah, Arrowhead's up to 1950 and beyond. We actually, uh, Arrowhead's and I found a, um, what was that one called? The, the Goddess? It was a Marfion Goddess for four grand. <laughs> oh, God, I could never imagine, never imagine spending four grand on a knife. Uh, you're missing a Chavez. Actually, I do have a review on two completely different. Uh, I've got the uh, Ultramar, uh, the G10 and Titanium, and then um, Shaker, the same gentleman who gave me this and sent me this for review, and this, and this, and donated something else. And this. Um, he actually sent me the um, collector. Is it the collector's group edition of the uh, 229? Um yeah, it was pretty uh, pretty sweet. I've got a review on it. Nine grand? What did you find? Oh, wait. That's right. That's right. Um, Arrowheads, what was it that you found? Was it... Uh, what? Give me that word again. That uh, The knife you found for over $9,000. Um, little DVZ reference there. Over $9,000. <laughs> Zell, of course. Um, but uh, uh, over $9,000. What, what was the inlay? That, that made it cost so much money. Does anybody know, is is, uh, is Jeff gonna say? And you left out the Freeman. Did I, no, the Freeman's right here. The Freeman's are, oh yeah, you mean mentioned it, yeah. Uh, meteor, was it a meteorite inlay? That It was like $9,000, it was crazy. Um, Shaker, this Freeman, I love it. It it makes me think, uh, it's very, it's very Hinderer-esque. Um, this this very much feels like if you took the XM18 and you turned it into a button lock knife. I mean, look at the jimping back here. Seriously, I'm going to take my XM18, put it up against the Freeman. See what I mean? This knife is so hinderery. It's 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 extremely hinderery. You think that's funny? <laughs> um, a space knife. Oh my gosh. Yes, the CNG. What does CNG stand for, Shaker? Uh, help me out with that. Woodland Tactical, what's up, man? Out of this world, expensive, yeah. Hindery, is that a word? Um, it's not a word, and yet it is a word, because it's. I say it a lot. I say it so much. It's like, what's the rule with words? How, how many times does a word have to be said be, before it becomes a real word? Chavez knife, knife group. Uh, Chavez even. What is MC getting for Christmas? I have, I, I have all of my Christmas presents. I think. <laughs> oh boy. Sorry, I'm reading. I'm catching up here. I'm doing my best to not look at my phone and look at comments. I'm doing my best to look over at the computer and do it so that I don't uh, touch the phone and make it fly all over the place. Zeb, Scott, what's up, fellas? Oh, I'm glad that Jeff knows some people in here. Um, okay, so uh, uh, some other things. This Civivi Shredder is incredible. Um, this is a, uh, a newer knife from Civivi. And it's very, very similar in, in my, in my experience, it's very similar to the backlash, except that it has this opening hole right here. And I actually prefer this substantially. Number one, the color setup, 
right? Gray and black, that's fine. There's some other configurations. Number two, it's in D2 steel. Um, I don't know enough, excuse me, I bumped the camera. I don't know about enough about the 9CR 18 MOV or whatever the backlash comes in, unless I'm mistaken. Um, but I, I, I am familiar with D2 and I really like it. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, the shredder blade is awesome. And it, I mean, in, in um, exactly what you'd expect, it is, a, it, oh, it's freakishly thin behind the edge. Like it, it, the edge almost completely disappears. It's crazy. That, that thing is a slicing machine and uh, there's a good price on it too. Yeah, absolutely. And one very interesting blade shoe. Wait, what's the? Oh, Kiefer. <laughs> Thanks, man. I hate Christmas. I love knives. <laughs> oh, well, listen, we, we all love you. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, this is out here just for you, buddy. Um, oh, and also because I really, really like, whoa, whoa. Okay. Uh, Pocket Tank, thank you very much. That was, uh... <laughs> look at his question. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Uh, my wife is here reading these. Um, do you even lift, bro? And my wife is uh, joke. She's she's gonna make me um, look bad. Thank you so much. That was unbelievably generous. Um, that will go towards. That absolutely will go towards the um, the uh, giveaway that I have planned. Thank you very much. That was super nice. Um, yes, I do lift sometimes. It's periodic over the holiday season. You guys know. There's, there's, I know Zell. Zell's going to be able to back this up, but there's at least there's at least one other person in here who knows about this. If you're somebody who exercises like for part of the year, you have like seasonal exercising patterns or whatever. Um, the holiday season is the worst because like, you know, when you're a kid, your favorite uh, holiday is Christmas because you get presents. And as an, as an adult, most of us, our favorite holiday is Thanksgiving because we like to eat, right? I literally plan my workout schedule around Thanksgiving and Christmas because of all the food. So it's super hard to keep on a, a good schedule. What, the, what are they saying? She wants to know. Where, oh, oh, honey. Yeah, well, she, of course, she's carrying it. Here you go. Show it off. You got to put it up. <laughs> That's beautiful. She carries it every day and she uses it every day, right? Mm hmm. Oh, so pretty. What? She doesn't like the sound of my um my hydrating. Pocket tank. <laughs> He's just cracking up. <laughs> oh man. Super nice of you. Seriously, that was that was way too generous. You are always incredibly generous on these live streams. What? Ham C 12 ounce lift stock count. <laughs> they don't? What? That's my my entire routine is based on 12 ounce lifts. What have I been doing this whole time? Got to move up to 16 ounces. Hydration is very, very important. Ironbound, is your, is your name a reference to, uh, are you a weightlifter? I'm just, every time I see your name, I just assume that that's the case. Oh boy. Biggest lift, my brass proponent. <laughs> <laughs> the brass proponent's that, uh, that gigantic, like, 14 ounce knife. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you pretty much have to deadlift that thing every time you put it in your pocket. That's awesome. All right, what do we have? We got 40 people in here and we were barely 13 minutes in. Awesome. I'm glad you guys wanted to hang out. I felt bad because technically I should have done a live stream last weekend and it just didn't work out. You know, I generally do them every other week, but I missed last week. So here's what I'm going to try to do I'm going to do a live stream um, tonight. And I'm also going to try to do one, excuse me, next weekend, either Friday or Saturday. So you guys are going to get two live streams in a, in a row for anybody who cares. Um, but uh, yeah, pretty pumped about that. Um, let's see. Did he actually answer? I don't know. Oh, he is? Okay. I just assumed. Um, if you do 12 ounce lifts, I hope you change hands. Yes. Yes, I. I that makes sense. You have to alternate. Sometimes you use the left hand, sometimes you use the right hand. I finally, look at my camera angle. I finally got that right. This one, I still have, this is the, the most that I've handled this just now, other than the, than the unboxing. And I'm very compelled by it because of the golf ball, sort of golf ball style texturing on here. This is one that uh, Shaker just sent me here recently that I unboxed. And 
it's really, really interesting. Very uh, chunky sort of, not like, not chunky like Red Horse Chopper chunky, but like it's a chunky little tank of a, uh, of a uh, titanium frame lock. It's pretty cool. Wood will integral. Screw the gym. Just ride a Kawasaki KLR650 in the mud, wrestling that 460-pound behemoth, 460-pound behemoth. Uh, you're probably right, but I don't know anything about bikes. But it sounds cool. Uh, Iron Man is actually Overkill album, one of my favorite bands to listen to in the gym. Oh, awesome. You have to listen to aggressive music in the gym. I feel. I mean, like, no offense, but I feel really bad for people who, like, listen to, um, like, chill like super chill country. <laughs> it's like you can't get worked up. You got to get worked up. My wife is looking at me like you're an, you're an idiot. <laughs> oh man. Thank goodness my connection has its stuff together. Wasn't getting a good connection, so I went and watched your last video somehow didn't notice the upload earlier and I have to admit I love it. Hey, awesome. I'm I'm really I'm really happy. There's like 600 and some for you to watch so if you'd like to. Somebody the other day told me that they have watched somebody sent me a meme of Kermit the Frog, like, staring out the window, and it was raining, and the subtitle was, when you've watched every single Metal Complex upload, and I, it made me laugh so hard, and I was like, somebody actually watched, like, all 600 and some <laughs> upload. Though, then again, I I feel like I've watched every single Nick Shabazz upload, and that and he's got, like, 1,500 or something like that. Uh, what's up, MC? Love the channel. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Kyle Roberts, what's up, man? Um, Kyle, you missed um everybody joking about hydration and pocket tank being super generous again, and 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 uh, Kiefer being super generous again. Absolutely. Hey, there's Barry Levitt. Uh, let's see here. Five finger death punch is definitely definitely gym music that I enjoy. Absolutely. <sighs> Nick Shabazz. It's a beautiful thing. Yep. <laughs> I have, I like, I, I feel like all of us have, hey, everybody, Nick here. And today, like, we all have that stuck in our head, you know? Or when you, when he does the, uh, when he does the, um, <laughs> the uh, Terrible Knives Live, it, so many times he draw, he, he was like, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Bam. And then, he unboxes it and he goes, K. <laughs> I just love that. It cracks me up because it's just such an explosively terrible thing. I've, I've actually sent him a couple of things and it was so much fun uh, to watch him just open it up and just be mortified at the uh, the awfulness of, of what we said it. Um, let's see here. Oh, crap. Just came in and thought Shabazz was on it. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not that cool. Uh, the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly. Yes. Yep. He, uh, he, he's got that, he's got that down. He has that corner. Um, very only when I'm taking you out, sweetheart. Oh boy. <laughs> we're only, we're, we're only 18 minutes in and they've already started their own thing. Um, he has a talk. Yeah, he definitely does. Absolutely. Uh, joining late. What are your thoughts on the Civivi? Oh my, well, I was just talking about that. This thing. Here, here's here's my gripe with Civivi. They, they've got this right, right? Like, they've got their flipping action. They clearly know how to grind a blade. The folks at Civivi and we, they know how to make a blade, right? They know how to put this slot in the right place, get the detent right, the flipper, you know, all that stuff. They've got that. They need to work on their pocket clip game. I do not like these. Gosh, bless it. I do. They do not need to work on these. Or, or I'm sorry. They do need to work on these pocket clips. I don't like these pocket clips. It looks like an old. It looks like an old rickety ladder, and this bill. Oh, that's just. It's gonna get caught on something, you know. To me, this is a work knife. This is a knife that I take outside and, and use, and, and you know, actually beat on. So I'm thinking about that pocket clip. That bill is gonna get caught on something. I would really like to see something like. Um, see what I mean? Here's another Civivi right here. Praxis, same thing. Weird old ladder with a bill on it. Um, what I'd like to see is more of a more of a swoop we have two examples here the whole gritter rsk mk1 g2 and the um the mxg d carry clip both have more of a swoop and a shallow bill much less likely to get caught on something and in my opinion a lot more of a durable design maybe not maybe there's not, nothing to be said there for durability but uh 
I feel like that Bill's less likely to get caught on something. Oh, let's see. Jeff is trying to make me spend all my money. <laughs> make him spend his money. Uh, Jeff. Kyle Roberts, he does that to me as well. Yeah. You... <laughs> Okay, I've joked enough. Thoughts on the Freak? The Freak is um, the, the two very best knives that Benchmade makes legitimately are, are right here. The Benchmade Griptilian is a great knife, but it has since been overshadowed by the Ritter, the Ritter Hogue. These two guys right here, the Mini Crooked River and the Super Freak, are the two very best knives that Benchmade makes currently. And they and, and they're, it's not like... You know, they're, they're great for Benchmade. No, like these are exceptional knives. They are exceptional in the high US production world. Um, absolutely. The Super Freak is, a, is in my opinion, 100% worth the money, despite Benchmade having kind of the stereotype of, you know, being overpriced sometimes. Now, the Super Freak is, is an incredible knife. Um, I'm not such a big fan of the Freak just with the standard materials, but that layered, that black and gray layered G10 with the red liners, um, and the red stand with that black M4 blade. It's just awesome. Lavender pants. I've owned about every Civivi except a Praxis for whatever reason. Yes, I need to pull it through. Yes, you do. Because I, I think uh, that's how I concluded the Quest of the Perfect Budget Knife series. The Praxis is the very best budget knife that exists. This is as close to perfect as I think um, could possibly exist. Just by my opinion, it is a big knife. You know, if they, you know, it'd be great. If they made one that was about 80%, 75 to 80% the size, so that people who don't like a big, you know, Spyderco Shaman or Shaman or Shaman size, however you guys want me to say it, uh, a big Shaman size knife, um, you know, could have, they could have a smaller one. I think that'd be great. What are you talking about here? Oh, Spirit of Whiskey, what's up, man? Um, That A Purvis up in the top left is the business it is the business this thing i'll i say it in the review um this is the best example i mean like the, if you want to know where the um production knife world is at this is a we made knife by the way um the basically the um the capabilities of the uh the production knife world like as far as the standards of a well-made titanium frame lock flipper um this whoops this literally i keep well the camera's so low I, the, the, um, the, uh, Zerks is like the best. I'm not, I'm going to say it's the best thing. It just represents that classic knife so well. It is, it is virtually flawless, such an amazing knife. And it, I think they wanted 280 bucks for it. Sometimes that starts to get a little bit high for a production knife. Um, but I, it's all there for 280 bucks. It's all there. I was telling, uh, I was telling spirit of that earlier today. Lindy Lou. Hey, what's up? Uh, let's see here. Hey, all happy Friday and Merry Xmas and happy Chana Chanaka. I don't know. Is that a joke? Oh, Hanukkah. Is that how you spell it? <laughs> oh, I'm dead. <laughs> I didn't understand. <laughs> What's the joke? What's the joke? Oh, my. Okay. My wife is weeping now at my stupidity. <laughs> Um, still have your Medford 187. I'm about to order one from the Medford guy in full time. Yeah. So the, uh, I think the, I don't have it anymore. That was my buddy David's, um, the Medford 187 in full tie, um, is I think Medford's best price. knife. you're getting an incredible knife for, uh, for the money. Um, and I mean, literally a knife that I think you could, you could drag with you through the apocalypse. Um, and it actually cuts. A lot of people are like, Medford is so thick, they don't cut. They do cut. They absolutely do. Azel, tell the good people about your crazy house parties. <laughs> my, uh, <laughs> my wife actually threw a party for one of our friends uh, here uh, this last weekend. And that was the reason for my not being able to do a live stream last weekend. I, the, the short of it is, is that I did not have the en energy or stamina to do a live stream. And Zell was present for that. My wife is very good at throwing uh, shindigs. Absolutely. What? Oh, no. 
No, I didn't. I don't. I didn't know. Oh darn it! Well, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just didn't understand. Uh, let's see here. Spirited. Are they available on the site right now? Yeah. Where did you get your Spirited? Because I thought that they were all sold out. Did you find one at a retailer? Because I remember A. Purvis saying something about like a hundred or so. Um, we're going to retailers. Uh, forgive MC for that one. All the protein powder gutters. <laughs> I, I completely deserve that. I just didn't, I didn't understand. Um, a purpose website direct. Interesting. I thought they were sold out. Well, there you go. Um, officially, I mean, if you're, listen, if you've got, you know, so, uh, up to 300 to spend and you're looking for like the perfect titanium frame lock. This this thing is is for real. It's absolutely for real. Um, that blade shape and the fit and finish on this thing is just it's absolutely perfect. It's also got a it's got an internal. Uh, the stop pin actually rides with the blade, so it's not. I mean, like it doesn't show. There's not. There's no stop pin back here. Everything is just like open and free. And the texturing that they've got on here, this milling, is just amazing. The actual video um, is much better. I, I did the video in 4K. Because I really wanted to show it off. Hey MC, I'm looking for a twenty to thirty-five dollar super smooth seven-inch folder. What would you recommend? Uh, wait, would you recommend the Kershaw Atmos? I I don't I don't know about the Kershaw Atmos. You're wanting a seven-inch knife that's super smooth in that range. The smoothest knife that I have ever experienced in the twenty-five dollar range is the Gonzo FH12, and I don't know if I'm gonna actually. And the Gonzo FH12 is too big. Let me try to um, demonstrate this. This knife legitimately has fall shed action. Um, and I, I don't know if this is too big for you, but um, this is the least expensive, completely fall shed knife that I've ever experienced. That is, and it's the only one, truthfully. I, I've never experienced any other knife that um, actually had that type of action at that price. But I feel like I've heard about the Kershaw Atmos. I just don't know. Uh, can you figure out how to turn this off? Let me turn them off. You're just supposed to hold that down. Here, I'm gonna, let me try this. Let me try this. Sorry, I'm trying to turn my. You guys know I have problems with my scale all the time. I'm trying to turn it off. It's like flashing. What's it? What's the question? How are you liking the Clyde? I thought about getting one, and wanted to know your opinion. The Clyde is awesome. It's an incredible knife. I didn't even know it existed until Spirited donated it to the channel. And tomorrow, one lucky person. Is going to be winning this. So if you're watching my live stream right now live, or you're watching it, you know, uh, later, you know, sometime in the next 24 hours, just know I'm drawing the names for both the Clyde and the uh, Mazarin Nimrod tomorrow. Um, so be ready for that video. I also did a video of. Wait, hang on. Lindy just got the uh, FH11S, and it's literally the cutest thing I've ever seen. Hashtag. Not disappointed, but wish I had gotten the FH12. I have, I'm not, we should get another stool. My wife has completely just taken my stool. Um, I'm not, I don't know all of Gonzo's line, but they're just, they're such an impressive brand. You know, like, I hope they steer, they continue to steer away from <laughs> taking, you know, what is he, what did he say? No, point out, let me see. Just so you know, your movies are on my Christmas list. <laughs> Love me some Star Lord. <laughs> <laughs> and Groot. We literally we do we have the set the second half of the last Avengers movie to watch tonight, right? I watched it. Well, I'm gonna watch it again. <laughs> Kiefer, Kiefer, because of you, I'm on a journey to build a bug out. Hey man, let me get my custom bug out out so you can see. That's awesome. Thank you, Kiefer. That was really nice of you. Yeah. Um, I very much enjoyed this knife. I'm gonna cover my sticker with it. Uh that titanium bug out, that flectanium bug out is just so cool. But anyways, yeah, we, we watched all of the um, Marvel movies over. We've seen them many times. We watched them over um, one a night in chronological order. Not like in order like that they came out, like in order of the, sto of the storyline so that we could sort of understand it better. Um, I'm not sure that I really learned a whole lot. <laughs> but we had an, it was an excuse to watch all the Marvel movies again. When you get Disney Plus and you get every single Marvel movie. Oh, they're talking so fast. Mail call today. It's a new TRM Neutron and Black Micarta. Oh, oh gosh. Excellent. Ultra light. Carries, uh, carry feels like the same way as the bug out, but stronger build. Yeah, I'm all for that. I'm good with lightweight. That's fine with me. What I don't like is FRN, so that sounds like a knife that I would be very interested in. 
if you could help me out with questions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Point point out the ones that. So your your my wife is going to be the judge of um, <laughs> which questions I should answer. So basically, try to cater your questions <laughs> towards what you think my would catch my wife's eye. <laughs> um, did you stay awake during Captain Mary Sue? Oh. He doesn't like Captain America. I'm guessing it was Captain Marvel. Oh, Captain Marvel. Okay. Guys, so here's my honest opinion on the Captain Marvel movie. Because I saw I saw all the stuff. Everything was like, it's so bad. What, what's her name? What's the actress's name? Brie Larson. Brie Larson. Everybody's like, Brie Larson is a terrible actress. She was, she, and we watched it, and I was like, it really wasn't that bad. And I mean, you guys, I'm not a movie critic, but I didn't understand what the big fuss was all about. Like, why, why did everybody come down on her so hard? It was okay. I've definitely seen way crappier movies and way crappier uh, superhero movies. Have you seen Aquaman or the, um, what was the Justice League movies? Oh, barf. Those were not good. Um, but uh, yeah, I didn't really have a problem with uh, Captain Marvel. It, it definitely is not the best, but it was definitely better than Ant-Man, in my opinion, don't you think? Ant-Man was, Ant -Man was not, not one that I liked. And, and I like Paul Rudd. He graduated from Kansas University. I like him. But Ant-Man was just not my thing. But yeah, Captain Marvel was okay. What? What are they, what are they talking about? They do that. They forget that I'm here or they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same, it's the exact same group of people every time. <laughs> we're, we're doing exactly one hour tonight, guys. So we got another 30 minutes or so. Best Marvel equals, Gu yeah, I, I love Guardians of the Galaxy. My wife is shaking her head even though her crush <laughs> is my doppelganger. No, it's you. Oh, oh, it's just me. It's so nice of you. Uh, no, but she's she uh, is a big fan of, of Chris Pratt in in reality, and uh, she just is kind of meh. You like the first one better than the second one, right? I love the set. I love them both, but the second one, I every single time I watch that, I just die laughing at everything. What do you say? Seven. Best Marvel movie was Captain America: Civil War. Yeah, that's my wife's favorite too. So, uh, I'm talking about you drinking your beer. Oh, like a nasty. <laughs> you just you just said the b word. Oh, I'm gonna get sorry. demonetized. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what YouTube's rules are on that. They can't see it. I'm not promoting it. Don't consume specific types of hydration. Um, hey MC, do you think we will see a mini super freak in 2020? Would you be in for one? Yeah, I think a mini super freak is a really good idea. Um, this is an awesome knife. It's very large for the same reason that they um, made a mini Griptilian. They should make a mini Super Freak. I think that's a great idea. Absolutely. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to run basically the same price. I mean, expect to see a price tag of 185 bucks, but I'd say it's still pretty justified. What question would you like me? You guys, are, you want to know what, what knife I decided I really like? The UTX-85. I, this is the best little EDC switchblade that's out there, and they have a Cali Legal version of it too. I love this thing. It's it's a little OTF, but I can get my hand all the way around it. This is a, a sweet configuration too. This dark red. Oh my gosh! I the UTX eighty five is a much more substantial OTF than I thought. I thought it was going to be this little dinky little thing, and no, it's it's actually it's a great EDC sized OTF, reasonably priced too. What's a good question? What's my favorite knife on the table besides what? The dog. Um, boy, let me see. Let me think. So, I'm not going to put <laughs> Kiefer. Only my questions. <laughs> it's all about Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I'll answer a Star Wars question for you in a sec here. I'm going to move the XM18 out of the way because you guys know that that's, that's Excalibur. So other than the XM18, right now, ugh, it's a toss up between the, um, my new, um, and this is just like my love for this crazy OTF. It's a toss up between the, the Microtech Combat Truid on Hellhound and this a Purpose Zerps. This is just ridiculous, but so is the Combat Truid on, but I love them for completely different reasons, right? I love this because it's insane. 
I love this is because it's a precision work of art that's also a completely functional and dependable tool. So those are probably my two other than the Hinder XM18. Uh, USA main blade that is. All right, let me see what he said. What did Woodland say? Any switch blade? Wait, what did he, he say? He said they'll be the lucky don't get caught. Oh, <laughs> good point. Although that that sort of unfortunately extends to a lot of different things, I suppose, that logic. Um, AMC, are you curing Excalibur? Yes, I am. I have gotten over... Um, the honeymoon phase of this, and it was when my um, when I picked up my combat on This thing is now in honeymoon phase. This thing's being baby. This guy, or uh, this gal, whatever, she gets carried. Um, love it. Don't have a problem with it. Now that I've now that I've actually found, like in my opinion, the perfect hinderer. Like I've a they've actually made it. Um, yeah, I can carry it because I don't have to seek it out anymore. I'm good. Um, the other one, the other one that I would have picked up that would have also been Excalibur would be, and they haven't made it yet, but I know they will. The Gen 6, three and a half inch Spanto Fatty will, would have been uh, a great uh, candidate for Excalibur as well. There's a balance between function and cool factor. The Spanto Fatty is just ultra thick and that just makes it kind of cool to me, but still functional. Slicer Blade's a little bit more functional. Uh, that Utex 85. Serial number 22 of 25. That's awesome. Shaker, you sent me some super cool stuff here, man. I mean, like, a lot of people have been sending me some awesome stuff lately. And, uh, you know, I have, you know, there's one other knife out here that I should have got out. But it's ready. It's being packed up to go back. Um, the North Arm Skaha. So that's been reviewed, and that's coming up. And spoiler alert, the Skaha is an awesome knife. You guys know about this. The only problem with it is getting your hands on it. This thing, this thing rocks. Like this is, this is absolutely built as a tool. You don't like it? Oh, you do? Okay. Uh, the Skaha is absolutely a tool first and foremost, and uh, is uh, a uh, flash and pomp and frill knife. Um, and basically, none. There's no flash, no pomp, no frill to this whatsoever. Do not pop those bubbles. Those go with the Skaha. That goes with the Skaha somebody else those are somebody else's bubbles those are lavender pants's bubbles my wife was popping the bubbles on the um the skaha wrapper sorry if lavender's still in here uh, but yeah the skaha is a great knife nothing wrong with a good tool absolutely no i agree i mean that's that's what's great about it is it's about a 200 dollars knife that um is uh a 200 dollars knife that uh is uh just a tool Have you checked out a TRM Adam? I don't remember seeing one on your channel. No, but I think there is absolutely going to be one coming. Um, that uh, that's something that uh, we're going to be taking a look at here soon. Not the Dalica functional artwork. Yeah, um, you know, surprisingly enough. Yeah, it's it's real safe. This is what Kiefer sent me. My wife has never seen this. Would you like to? Um, no. You want to just take a look at it? Here you go. What is it? It's uh, it's a knife. Huh. Feel, feel how sharp it is. I don't... It's not sharp at all. What's it for? <laughs> it's actually a knife. It's just very, very well made. What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we love the Dalika and we love Kiefer. Absolutely. <laughs> Wait. That Crooked River is sweet. Yeah, it, I, I really like that Crooked River. I'm so excited that uh, that Shaker gifted that to me. That's, I don't know. Shaker sent this one to me, and I, I don't I can't remember what he said that it was, but it's it's actually it's great. It's awesome. Here's the logo on it. Can't focus correctly because we're, we're on live stream. Shaker will have to tell you, um, but uh, it's a nice sort of tanky little uh, frame lock flipper. Pretty cool. Can't say that shaker till you try one. Try what? Functional is a stretch. <laughs> My only problem with the Super Freak is that it is M4 and I live near the coast. Yeah, the, the non stainless steels, if you live in an area where um, that's going to be a problem, uh, I, I, I feel for you. It, you know, my. Uh, can somebody help me out with um, whether uh, M4 is more or less stainless than Maximin? 
I always assumed that Maximet was less stainless than uh, M4, but I don't, I'm not 100% sure because of the difference in carbon and chromium content between the two. But the reason I'm asking is because I live in Kansas and we're kind of neutral out here, but that Maximet has not formed a patina yet. I mean, it's got a couple of little dots and things on it, but they're not, I mean, it's just, it's just spotty patina. It's not really a full patina. Received a Sheergroff Haiti R in the mail this morning. Best action I've ever handled. I uh, bet I've never I've actually never handled a Sheergroff, and I'm sure that it's awesome. Off grid knives, black mamba in tie and M390. Received the knife with them. Oh, oh, that's oh, that's what it is. Shaker says off grid knives, black mamba in tie and M390. Uh, so there you go. That's what it is. Um, pretty sure M4 will rust pretty quick. Yeah, but is it? I, I I feel that way too. But you know, like I've had some M4 blades in EDC, and I never got any patina out here in Kansas. Now, then again, I don't use my knives super like you know crazy hard. But is it more or less stainless than Maxima? If somebody would be able to answer that, that'd be that'd be cool. How am I liking the Civivi brand? Civivi is just home run after home run after home run. You know, if anything, um, I think that eventually their designs, their designs are so good. They're using such proven like baseline designs. Um, and they're so good and so functional that people might start to get a little bit eh, kind of bored with them unless they mix it up a little bit. Um, like they're doing everything exactly right, you know, but eventually they're going to run out of stuff. I, I, um, that, that's just my thought, but, uh, as of right now, I think Savivi's doing great. Have you seen the UTX 85 Blade HQ exclusive with the clear G10 skills so you can see the internals? Yes, I have, and it is super cool. Absolutely. Come on, uh, I'm sure I'm full of that. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Blade. Better blade steel S35 Vienna 20 CV. It depends. If I'm um, if I'm rocking a now here's the thing. I'm gonna con the people are gonna call me out immediately because they're gonna be like your hinder is in 20 CV. 20 CV gives me that feeling of premium, right? Without jumping up to Dama steel or Dama core or Armor core Damascus or whatever. You right? Without jumping up to a super exotic or a laminate, right? 20 CV gives me that feeling of premium. Why? Because 20 CV is the most stainless steel that has the high, like it has the best uh, uh, ratio of stainless to uh, stainlessness to edge retention. And that is put up on a pedestal in the EDC world um, because of how people generally use their EDCs, right? Um, so on a small knife that's got um, really great um, geometry, you know, one that's going to accentuate slicing performance but doesn't need to be super tough, like it's not going to be used for super tough tasks. Um, and uh, uh, you know the uh, the Rockwell hardness is is correct. I believe 20 CV M390 204P is optimized at 61, 62 Rockwell. Um, then on a knife like that, I'm going to prefer 20 CV. On a knife like a full size knife like this or like this or like this knife that I'm going to go outside and beat on uh, S35 VM for sure because it's tougher and it's easier to sharpen. Right? If I'm really going to beat on it. I'm going to use it, then that's what I'm going to want. Van X 37 is overjoy. I don't have any experience with Van X 37. I don't know what that is. Those Van X steels are very, um, very foreign to me. Absolutely. I know a Koenig is a lot of money. If you could, what model would you get? Would you prefer the Arius or the Mini Arius coming out in 2020? Um, so I've handled both the Arius and the Mini Goblin, and I love them both. I think a Mini Arius is really cool. You know what I think the coolest version of the Arius that I've ever seen was? I handled a an Arius with a flipper tab, and it is truthfully one of the most, it's it's a lot like the A-Purvis Zerks in that it's one of the most perfectly, you know, created things in the knife world. I mean, it's just a fantastic example of what flipping action can be, you know, but it's got the drop shut smoothness. It's also got the little thumb hole. It's got the um, uh, uh, the contouring, and you have all the different uh, options as far as 
um, your uh, your uh, scales go and things like that. I mean, it's just an amazing knife. The only downside is, is it, it's expensive, but it's worth it. Um, it's an incredible knife. That's probably the one that I'd go with. But I would go, Dr. Frunky had one that didn't have a flipper. It, it had a forward choil and no flipper. And that's probably the one that I would go with, honestly. Did a quick search, Maxima is a bit more corrosion prone than M4. That's what I thought. That's honestly what I thought, but I wasn't 100% sure. I want an Arius and now a Mini Goblin. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff Jeff uh, sent me both the Mini Goblin and the Arius. The the Mini Goblin had an impressively an impressively strong detent, but um, that little that little aggressive one cliff and that sapphire blue uh, twill was just amazing. What do you say? What knives are on the Christmas list? I don't know that I'm getting any knives for Christmas, but truthfully, the one that I want, what? Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, the one that I want, um, that I'm, I'm going to try to chase down at some point, whether I have to sell something in my collection, um, you know, in, in uh, 2020, the one that I'm really going to go after is probably the, uh, the Strider Marfion uh, MSG. Uh, that is just a beautiful, now that I know that they are um, in integrals, or integrals, as my wife would say. Um, I want that Arius back. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I figured that you'd be missing that for sure. Kyle, sell me one. <laughs> oh, man. They're great knives. Like, Koenig makes unbelievably great knives. Um, is it Bill Koenig? Uh, I keep wanting to say Koenig. Because of the the car manufacturer Koenig Sig, that's what that's what I want to do. In fact, I had a big problem with that when I was reviewing the knives. I really want that Berry Knife Centurion after I pay off the last night. I don't know what that is. That is not a knife that I am familiar with. What do you say, Jeff? They are both my babies. One is my first blade show purchase. The other one is my customer. I'm so jealous of everyone who's been to Blade Show. What? I want the one Krista held on. He has to do a sick picture of the MC. You did? I'll have to look back. Between, okay, so between Shaker, uh, Spirited, and Jeff, I cannot tell you guys how many pictures of knives. And that's not counting the stuff that I get tagged in on Instagram. I'm not trying to be like, I'm so important. People send me pictures of knives all the time. No, but like, like I think that I'm crazy and you guys get some of my craziness on my reviews and stuff, but like Spirited and Jeff and Shaker are just constantly sending me pictures of stuff. And I, and I love it all and I drool over it and I just, I lose track of everything. Love the new Koenig my card and mini goblin just got. I bet you do. I bet you do. Best blade of the ones on the table. We were just talking about it. Best blade, like best performing blade, or like my favorite. I'll do both. I'll do both. So my favorite, I talked about this. My favorite stuff out of everything that's on the table. We're not gonna count the XM. Everybody knows that. That's a boring answer. Um my favorites uh, just like in terms of cool factor or just in terms of build quality. Build quality, this guy, cool factor, the uh, combat truant on Hellhound, but best blade on the table, best functional blade on the table. Boy, it's pro honestly, it's probably the Civivi Shredder or the Skaha. Um, both the Shredder and the Skaha, and you know, I mean, like you, I suppose, like even the um, the little uh, Clyde could be in there too, but. These blade shapes are just ridiculous. Um, may, um, the, here's, here's why I'm going to give it to the Skaha. Because if I was going to go camping, this is the knife I'd bring with me. If I was going to choose a folding knife to go to bring with me camping, this is the one I'd bring with me. Why? Because it's fully flat ground. There's nothing to get caught in the cutting path. It's incredibly thin, like less than 100 thousandths on the spine and an absolute laser beam at the edge. And it's S35VN. Um, I think that's the most functional, like that is the most straightforward functional blade shape 
that's out there. And if Lavender Pants is in here, he probably can attest to it, despite that knife not looking super duper used. Does anyone know when a Three Rivers Adam in Red Micarta will become available? There's a Three Rivers Adam in Red Micarta coming out. That sounds awesome. Wait, there's Lavender. They become screaming sharp too, I bet. I bet, man. Um, hey, do you mind me asking how long did you wait for your Skaha? Because when I did the review, I remember I, I looked on their website and I saw that they said we have to be careful. We have to close our orders right now because we don't want to um, get into a situation where we're having people wait for like two years. And I was like, oh my gosh, people are waiting. They, they must be waiting like close to a year and a half, at least a year and a quarter for their Skahas. So I'm just wondering how long did you have to wait for yours? Have you ever owned a Medford of your own? Me? Yeah. Yeah. I've owned uh, the 187 um, in G10. Um, I've owned the 187 Flipper. I've owned the Praetorian T. I've owned the Praetorian Tie. I have owned a uh, full thickness Marauder. It's one of my favorite knives ever. And boy, have I owned anything else from Medford? I don't think so. Yeah, at least those, possibly some others, but I can't remember right now, honestly. Has anyone handled the Boker Kalashnikov? Yes, I have, uh, Christopher. There's actually a review on it. Um, in the review, I was like, uh, you know, I was kind of disappointed because it's got more play than I thought it was going to have. Um, but then I handled, and I have another video on this, I handled one of my buddies that he had used on and off for like 13 years and it had exactly the same amount of play and it was still firing hard. So uh, the CTS XHP Boker Kalashnikov remains to be the best buy of CTS XHP that I've ever seen. And the Kalashnikov has proven to be one of the most durable little knives for the money that I've ever seen. So I think uh, officially, I think I can recommend that knife. Adams will be available from TRM site in mid January no wait list they should have stock to choose from they just announced it. Oh, I need to. Everybody's talking about that knife. I feel so left out because I've never experienced it. Red my card from Adam. Oh, red my card. It sounds awesome. Absolutely. Where did that go? There it is. I can send you my Adam. I think was it was it you that I was somebody somebody was talking with me about sending me a neutron, but I don't have I don't have an offer to be sent an atom. I need to get caught make sure that I get everybody's stuff back. I've got uh, a lot of shaker stuff, a lot of Jeff stuff, lavender. I've got yours, and I've got a couple of things that need to go back to the pass run group next week. Um, as soon as that stuff is back, and it's the same thing that I told um, Spirited Whiskey. I don't want people trying to send me stuff before Christmas because it's good. I don't want it to get lost. If, uh, if there's stuff that's going to be, you know, people want to send to me, let's wait until after Christmas. Cause I would just feel horrible. Um, if somebody lost like one of their babies trying to get it to me. Um, yeah, yeah, he does. Nick Chavez does like it. And I, I gotta admit, you know, I want, I, I think I'm, I'm like a lot of people in that I watch his channel and when he says he likes something, I'm like, Oh, I need to try that. <laughs> Sometimes it, it can be hard to think for myself, but there have been times where he has liked something and I have got it in hand and I'm like, I like it, but I don't like it as much as I thought I would. So I, I suppose part of me still thinks for myself, but the other, on the other hand though, he's, he's simply just a good resource for information. You know, I, I think, I honestly think that Nick has a great uh, eye for detail and he's got um, a practiced hand and, and uh, he's, um, he's talking with the right people and experiencing the right things. And I think he's just um, he's just a good source for stuff like that. I was thinking about picking up, sorry, I was thinking about picking up one of those quiet query, quiet carry drifts, but heard the lock bar is tough to access and kind of stiff to close. Yeah. So spirited. Here's here's the other thing. The other reason that I like initially, I was like, oh my gosh. That looks like such a uh, such an awesome awesome knife. Maybe that's something that I want to pick up. Um, 
But here's the reason that I'm not that I that I feel like I'm not going to. I I heard that too. That the, your complaints that you that you uh, touched on. Also, it's way smaller than I thought. I never bothered to look up the specs on it, but I thought it was like almost the same size as the Shaman. And I'm okay with the thinness on the spine and the thinness of the scales, but I thought it was about the same size as the Shaman. And that's, I was like, eh. You know, and it's like in my mind when I think it's one thing and it turns out to be another, there's nothing wrong with it being the size that it is. It just, I really thought that it was going to be a little bit bigger of a knife. Excuse me. TRM is making a smaller knife called the Nerd coming out really soon. Uh, I'm sure it will be stellar too. I'm sure it will be. Absolutely. These look nice. We're going to two people that uh, bought them and have sold them. Actually, it just looks like such a fantastic functional design. What was that? It was something from from Instagram. Sorry, my phone buzzed there in the middle of the live stream. I think it's from Instagram. Um, I have a nerd prototype actually. Hmm. Interesting. I would like to see a picture of that. If you could send that to me on Instagram, that'd be great. Oh my gosh. We are closing in on an hour. Um, just a few minutes left here, guys. Good. I don't currently own a currently. Yes. Um, spirited have you, but you have owned it, right? You have owned it and experienced it before. Like that's, you're, you're, you're not saying that you've never experienced it, right? You just don't own one. You should own one. I mean, no, you know what? I'm not going to say you should. I'm not going to pressure you into buying something. But the PM2 for me, here's, here's my honest thoughts about the PM2. In its base form, it's kind of dull and it's also kind of outdated, right? Um, but with a couple, like if, you, if you're into like buying custom parts for your knives and upgrading things with a couple of upgrades, PM2s can really shine, especially with these, some of these aftermarket part creators that are doing contoured scales. Oh my gosh. Find yourself a really good uh, dealer exclusive in like 20 CV or something. And then, you know, maybe get like an MXG clip and maybe a bag spacer or something. I've got a, um, I've got a uh, flightanium bag spacer on mine. And just some just some normal, you know, like jade uh, aftermarket scales, and they're great. And I, I love my PM2 now, and I actually carry it. Sold all my PM2s other than my left-handed model. Why? That's okay. I mean, sometimes you just... You know what's funny? So I'm... Wait, wait what, what did Spirited say? I just love the DLC and GG Camo Edition. Fine with S3D. Um, yeah. So here's the thing. Like, I experienced um boredom with a model that i know to be excellent and i've said it before on the channel um the benchmade 940 is an excellent model whether the aluminum form the g10 version in the dash 2 or the carbon fiber even though it's a little overpriced in fact it's massively overpriced hey uh boss uh 3251 thank you so much man he says gotta go mc merry christmas to you and your wife hey thank you that was really nice of you i, I really appreciate that thank you so much um, whether the 940 comes in the, um, aluminum form or, uh, the G10 form or the carbon fiber form, um, they're, they're, they're great knives, you know, functionally. I just have, I've grown away from them, you know, um, I, I, there was some company who did some contour titanium scales and I thought briefly, I was like, should I, oh, should I do a custom 940 build? And I thought, no, I think I'm over that knife. So anybody who is experiencing the same type of thing with their PM2 or any other model for that matter, I can completely understand and would not judge you in the slightest. I don't think any model is immortal. I think uh, model, you know, like the Benchmade Griptilian, the Spyderco PM2, the Ontario Rat 1 and 2. I mean, those are legendary knives, but they will eventually be outdated completely. You know, they will be outclassed by better models. And it's just something that people like me are going to have to accept. I have a PM3 lightweight, and it's made me want a PM2 more than ever. Have you ever had a PM2? Because if you haven't, the first thing that's going to bother you is, you, I mean, you're going to pick it up and go, wow, the handle is gigantic for how little blade that I get. You know, and, and eventually, like, once you, get, once you get to the point where you're, you're over that, you'll be okay. But for me, I had to change out the scales to really enjoy it. Smaller than you might think. Okay. Thoughts on the Ranjack 2 with a composite blade. 
I don't know. This, like, I, I, I have not seen that. I'll have to, wait, no, wait a second. I'm thinking, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm stink, I was thinking of the steel wheel cut jack. The Riot Jack 2 with a composite blade looks amazing. It truthfully looks incredible. I'm very, very excited about that. The, I think the prototype TRM is working on now. The shadow will be really good. It's basically a large... Wait, sorry, it moved. It's basically a large nerd on an access lock. Interesting. PS2 is a bit bigger than you think after owning a pair of 3 at first. Yeah, definitely. The PM3 is a, uh, the PM2 is shockingly large compared to the pair of 3. Absolutely. I found that I love... The pair of three for its size, and I still love the PM2, but I just uh, it's just not not quite the same. Metal Complex Burke is the guy I gave the Henry to. That I got oh, that's awesome! You did you gifted uh, the uh, the Fatty Warncliffe. Uh, that's that's really really cool. So generous! Another example of Shaker's generosity. Um, but uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Gregory Burke, um, I. Uh, <laughs> I, I labored over that that custom build. That was one that I've been wanting to build for a long time, and I was very careful putting the hardware back in. Uh, if, if Shaker babied it like I did, you you will not find a single flaw on that bad boy. Um, but uh, not not that I was um, part of Shaker's generosity, but uh, I, I hope you're enjoying it. Absolutely, Shaker's a fantastic guy. Uh, good to know. I will. Put the time in and break it in properly. It's going to be a great secondary when I carry the atom. It's going to be the best knife I've ever held. Sorry, I'm, I should read these comments out loud. Oh, gosh. Thanks going off again. Okay, guys, it has been an hour. It is time for us to go. This has been an awesome live stream. I'm really glad to catch up with everybody. Um, expect uh, another live stream. If, all, if everything goes as planned, expect another live, uh, live stream next week. Friday or Saturday, I will definitely let you guys know. Those of you who follow me on Instagram, I will definitely let you guys know um, when I'm going to be doing it. But um, anyways, guys, I hope you all have a great uh, evening. I hope you have a great weekend. Those of you who are um, on vacation for uh, for the holiday season, um, I, I hope you uh, hope you uh, enjoy spending time with your friends, families, you know, whoever. And for those of you who have to work, um, you know, sorry, but uh, I will have a continuous. Oh, thank you, Lavender Pants, paying for shipping. <laughs> I told you not to do that. I would, I would gladly cover shipping. Well, thank you anyway. That was really, really nice. You better say happy. And and happy. Yeah, my wife said I better say happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, anyways, for those of you who have to work, um, I uh, I've got plans for Christmas, but it's like I've been saying. I have pre-recorded enough content to make sure that you guys still get the same stream of content. You will be getting at least one upload a day, knife reviews, unboxings, discussion stuff, knife guy stuff. Nothing's going to change. I'm just going to be a little bit less active on social media and on YouTube. But anyways, guys, um, I appreciate everybody coming in tonight, talking with me. And thank you so much for the uh, donations. Really, really nice. That's going to be it for me. We will see you all tomorrow.